G'day, in this video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having a look at the basics of fractions. Now fractions are numbers which are used to describe parts of a whole and you'll often see them written as follows. Uh, I'll write one down right now, three quarters. A common fraction, but I'll just go through to explain the different parts and the different names of what we have when we talk about fractions. So first off we have the number up the top here. Now the top number is called the numerator, and I'll just write that down. Okay, so this is called the numerator. Uh, the bottom number here is called the denominator, uh, the denominator. And you'll quite often hear people refer to the lowest common denominator and things like this. Okay, so we often just think of these as top number and bottom number, but it's the numerator and the denominator. The other part of a fraction that we have here is this part here, which is this line here, okay? And this line is called the vinculum. And I know I am gonna say that incorrectly, the vinculum. So <laughs> i just say it twice, just to really reinforce the incorrect way of probably saying it. So uh, often when I think about this middle part here, I think about this being divide. So I'll show you what I really mean by this when I talk about this. When I think about fractions, I think about them being either three parts of four or three out of four, but if I'm thinking about this sometimes with numbers, I also think this as three divided by four. And I think that's a great way to think about it as well. And that helps you if you get stuck on fractions because you can work out what the decimal of these are just by going three divided by four, which is equal to 0 0.75. Then further from this, you can see the relationship to percentage because this number is out of one, but if we multiply by 100 just to make it a little bit nicer, we end up with the percentage, which is 75 percent. So what types of fractions do we have? Now I guess a proper fraction is what you think of as a normal fraction where we have the numerator, the top number, being bigger than the denominator. So the number we had before, three quarters, was an example of a proper fraction. The numerator is bigger than the denominator. Uh, half would be an example of a proper fraction or say something like three-fifths. Okay, these are all examples of proper fractions. The numerator is bigger than the denominator. However, we have another type of fraction which is important to know, which is called an improper fraction. So improper fractions as opposed to proper fractions are fractions where our denominator is bigger than our numerator. An example for this might be four over three. Okay, four out of three. And you might think that's a bit counterintuitive. How can you have a bigger number out of a smaller number? And we'll have a look at that in a little bit later. Okay, or you might have something like uh, five out of two. Any time that you have this numerator bigger than the denominator, you have yourself an improper fraction. Now, we can change an improper fraction to what's known as a mixed number. So this leads us to another type of fraction, which is a mixed number. A mixed number is where you have a mixture between whole numbers and fractions, okay? So four out of three as a mixed number, and I'm gonna show you at a different stage how to work these out, and they're pretty easy, would be written as one and one third. Or five over two could be written as two and a half, okay? We have an improper fraction which can be converted across to a mixed number. So just to explain all those different ideas we've gone through and how they relate to one another, what about I show you on a number line? So we've got this number line and it's going along. It's going to start at zero, we go along one part, we go along another to two. We don't need to actually go any further to show you what I want to show you here. So say let's consider the fraction three quarters. Now at the moment this is in an improper fraction form, okay? The numerator is bigger than the denominator. So let's actually put this on the number line. How do we go about doing this? Between one and zero here, divide up this many times, the amount which is the denominator. So we're gonna break up between one and zero here four times, four equal parts. One, two, three, four. And we can keep going and we can keep doing it here as well. One, two, three, four. So what we can do now is we can go through and start putting fractions along our number line here, all related to quarters. We could go along one part and we have gone one out of four. We could go along two parts here and we've gone two out of four. We could go along another one and we've gone three parts out of four. And you're gonna see this is the one we wanted to put on. I'm gonna rub that out because I'm gonna keep going with this idea. Here, we've gone four out of four. And as I said before, you're gonna go, hey, that's one. Four out of four is equal to one. Four divided by four is equal to one, like we said before. We have five out of four, we can keep going. We have six out of four, 
we have 7 out of 4, we can go 8 out of 4. Once again, 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2. All right, so what have we got so far? You can see what we have here is a whole bunch of proper fractions. We go here and we have a whole bunch of improper fractions. So what we could also do is we could change all these guys here across to mixed numbers, okay? Because five divided by four is one and one left over, one out of four, okay? This is one plus one quarter, okay? So one and a quarter. This is one and two quarters. This is one and three quarters. So I'll put that one in there and I'll put this one in here because that fits as well. This is one and three quarters and seven divided by four is one with three left over, three over four. That's pretty all right, eh? Not too bad. Just leaves that last thing I want to explain, which is, I guess, equivalent fractions. Now, what we also could have done is we could have got our number line here. And instead of breaking it up into fours, I could have considered halves. Now, I'm going to leave this all up here because I just want to use it to explain something. And that is equivalent fractions. So if I was to break this up into halves, I'd start with my zero and I would have broken it up like this. Okay, I'd be breaking it up into halves. Okay, one there has been halved into two equal parts and this part here has been halved into two equal parts. Now, if I was going up like this, what you'd see is I'd go up one out of two. I would have gone up two out of two, three out of two, four out of two. But it's just these parts here that I want to show you. What we have is equivalent fractions here. Two is twice as big as one and four is twice as big as two. Anyway, hopefully that was a great introduction for our fractions for you. We'll see you next time, bye.